Thanks for tuning in today. I'm John Holmes of Holmes Hobbies and we're going to cover how to get the best low speed control out of your crawler. After the last video that I did, the review of the Hobbywing X system, I had quite a few people asking me, how did I get such good low speed control out of my systems? And I figured, hey, what better way to do it than to actually just do it in front of a camera for you. Uh, so I have chosen the um, Sidewinder 4 combo with a revolver. It's an 1800 KV 540 size. I'm running 3S LiPos from Helios RC. It's a 3500 milliamp hour 30C pack if you're interested. And running the stock uh, TQI radio. So 1800 KV is a little bit slower than the stock motor in the TRX4, but it still is pretty close to the wheel speed that it gets. Uh, so for a two speed like this, and even a single speed where you don't need a whole bunch of wheel speed, uh, 1800 kV is a great choice, even down as low as like 1400, 1500 kV is a great choice for that as well. Um, the nice thing about brushless motors as compared to brush is that you can get a much wider RPM range and still retain your low speed control. And that's kind of the sign of a really goodly, a goodly tuned, a well tuned system is that you can have a lot, a lot of wheel speed uh, on a four pole system for the single speed uh, setup, like on a, let's say a Wraith with stock gearing 80, 20. Um, you can actually get about 20 miles an hour at top speed and still re retain enough low speed control to crawl through absolutely anything. You know, a quarter of a uh, mile an hour, even slower startup speeds, as long as everything is tuned right. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, this system it doesn't have quite the range of wheel speed because it's a lower KV, uh, being 1800 versus like a 3500 that, as I would use in a four pole system. But we can still do the same things that we would normally do. So let's just kind of point out the parts of our system. So this is the overall, the rig, the vehicle, TRX4. This is the motor over here. If you're not familiar with the electronics, that's the motor. Speed controller is hiding over here. I'm not running the fan on the SW4. Doesn't really need it in a crawler, honestly. But if your system runs really hot, you can keep the fan on. And then here's our battery over here, and then here's our radio receiver. So a system on a rig has kind of an order to it. So first of all, your rig has to be tuned well for the low speed itself. So your gearing has to be right, but you also need to have a drivetrain that's relatively free rolling. And uh, right now I've got everything hooked up, so it's not the most free rolling because it's pushing through the motor and everything like that. But if you have binding in your drivetrain, it's gonna kind of lurch and not go smoothly through all the rotations of the tires. And that's gonna hamper your ability to start up smoothly at low speed and also predictably, no matter you know, where you are, essentially. So we wanna make sure that our rig is at least well lubed and set up and your gear mesh is proper on everything there. Next up is the motor in the system and the motor controls the truck. So you get the truck right, next we look at the motor. The motor has to be engineered properly to start up smoothly. There are a lot of motors out there that don't start up smoothly because simply put they're for racing and they're not for crawling. Uh, all of my motors are engineered for crawlers because that's pretty much all that I do. Once I got hooked on crawling in 2002, I, I just left all of my other RCs behind. I, I don't really care about them anymore. Uh, so everything that I've done since that point has been for the purpose of low speed control, but without sacrificing efficiency or power density at the same time, because it's really easy to try to get low speed control in a motor by doing things like, uh, you know, Hobbywing came out with a new staggered pole motor. And I'm not sure if it was their motor controller or their motor that was extremely soft on acceleration, more than likely is the motor. Uh, but when you do things like staggering the pole to try to get smoother startup, you do lose efficiency, you lose torque density, and you end up pushing the KV higher while the, uh, the phase resistance of the motor stays the same. So it ends up just burning more heat um, instead of making power itself. So I'm not really sure where I'm going with that. But essentially, the motor has to be designed for good low speed control to begin with. And in my case, I try to make it to where I'm not compromising anything else. And it takes a lot more time doing that. Uh, tuning the magnetics to actually get a smooth startup without compromising the torque density of the motor. It's, it's a very fine line to ride there because it is very easy to ruin a motor design trying to get it to start up really smooth. So we already have a motor that's known to be smooth starting. Next is the ESC and in this case I'm using a Sidewinder 4. I tend to lean towards Castle Creations products. Uh, Tekken products are also extremely good. I'm not as familiar with tuning them so I'm going to show you doing a Castle Creations product today. My products are all based on Castle Creations hardware. They also work with the Castle Link. And so it's the exact same tuning process, the exact same settings and just the same workflow for it. Um, so we know that our ESC can start up good, especially with the latest releases that they've done. My BLE controller also starts up good. We did some changes to it that Castle has ended up using on their controllers as well. We have a back and forth relationship in that way. And it is, you know, as the example would be, 
the way that I have this one tuned, the Sidewinder 4 outputs about 0.01 volts in the first steps of throttle as it applies. And then since I have an exponential in the curve, it actually has less resolution on the upside of it. So it's about 0.04 volts per step when we get towards the end of it. But the entire spread is a 10 bit, uh, let's say it's 1,200 or 1,024 steps in the entire throttle spread. So only half of that is on forward throttle or on reverse throttle. So we have 512 steps to work with and you can actually do the math to figure out you know, how much voltage step that would normally be. It's about 0.02 volts, had a little hair floating in front of my face there. Um, it's actually 0.02 volts normally until you put an exponential throttle curve on it. So we'll, we'll get into that ex in more detail when I do the programming. Uh, but that's essentially what we would do. Make sure that the ESC is now programmed properly so that the motor that has good startup can start up well. So the ESC is kind of like the, you know, the, uh, the controller. It is the controller, obviously. Uh, it, it's really what says the system can or can't do. So if you have a low quality controller, it doesn't matter how good your motor is, it's still not gonna start up good. Uh, so next in line is your radio. And the nice thing about having a good speed controller is that you can have a pretty junky radio like the TQI. And it's not that junky, but the, the throttle is a little like sticky. It doesn't output the mo I mean, It's pretty consistent on the waveform that it outputs. Um, but there's still a little stiction to the radio to where you can kind of like beat it and get it to change a little bit. Um, but when we use a good ESC, we can tune it to, to the way where the downfalls of the radio aren't even noticeable anymore. So that's pretty much the system. The truck needs to be smooth rolling, then the motor needs to be designed to start up smoothly, then our ESC needs to be programmed to allow the smooth startup, and then our radio also needs to be capable of fine tune on the control. So that's pretty much it. So we're going to plug this back in. Castlelink will detect the controller, it'll tell us we need new firmware, and we're not gonna update firmware right now. So we're just gonna go through all the settings here. We go to the basic tab, make sure it's on auto LiPo, I'm using lithium batteries, uh, voltage on the cutoff, we can keep the same. Crawler reverse type, that's one feature that's fairly important because it gives you an immediate reverse instead of having to double tap the reverse or wait for it. And when you're on the rocks and you're gonna tip over backwards, that crawler reverse lets you back out really fast and not flip over. Brake amount, it's really not that important because we use drag brake on a crawler setup. On this particular motor, I'm using 30% drag brake because it has a ton of drag brake on there. So we don't need a whole lot at all. So we go to the next tab, power tab. Start power high for Castle Creations controllers. This is somewhat important. Some people say that they have better control when there's a low startup power. I don't agree at all. High startup power by far has given me the best results as far as having controllable startup every single time, no matter what the load is. So I always use high startup power. Max power 100%, that makes sure we have you know, full speed and forwards. Reverse percentage 100%, that gives me full speed and reverse. Punch control 30%. Punch control will limit your acceleration just a little bit. And the reason why I use 30% punch control is that on really any system, if you just grab full throttle as fast as you can, that battery will not take it on an average motor. Um, even a motor that's not that great, the resistance of the system is so low that it'll just pull that pack way down. You know, it'll, it'll pull it past nine volts and it, it won't be happy. The system won't like it. So a little bit of punch control, just 30%, does not give a perceivable slowness to my acceleration. However, it keeps that battery from dumping and it just adds enough time for the ramp up that we don't hit like a soft uh, voltage cutoff and we don't have freak outs on our radio. And it just keeps my system happy and glitch free. So 30% punch control, always a good idea. If you're having any sort of glitching issues, add a little bit of punch control and that usually solves it. All right, now we're on the advanced tab. 1.5 second arming time, I'm not gonna change that. Live link enabled, I'm not gonna be using that. Throttle dead band. If you want a little bit more sensitivity to the throttle, you can change this. I keep it average at 0.1 millisecond, not a big deal. All right, motor type, motor direction normal. You can use that to reverse the direction. Uh, the TRX does use a reverse direction motor. However, this is a sensorless motor. Since it's only three wires with no sensor wire, I can just reverse two of the leads on the motor and it runs in reverse. So I don't need to use this in software. Sensorless motor timing. This is kind of important to, to get this right for your motor. And every motor is gonna act different. So this may be something that you wanna test. I almost always run lowest timing, so zero degree sensorless timing. If you want a little bit more wheel speed, bump it up to five or 10%. If it's a low pole count motor, you can go crazy on it and go you know, 20, 30, 40, 45 degrees of timing. 
the lower the pole count, the higher you can go on timing. However, if we're crawling, we want to keep good efficiency. And the best way to keep good efficiency is to have the lowest timing on your motor. It's just like a gas engine. If you have too much timing advance on there, you lose your torque and you gain RPM. Same thing for the way that an electric motor works. Now, the very important part is the throttle curve. And this makes it to where we actually have more steps of resolution during the startup. Now we could add an expo to the throttle curve on the radio itself, but that actually is just removing sensitivity from the initial part of the trigger pull. We are still giving the same information, but it's spreading that information out. So it can actually make it feel more choppy if you're adding exponential to the throttle on your radio. So instead we add exponential to our ESC. And the way that I have it set is that right about 50% of my input throttle, I'm only at 20% on the ESC. So 20% of the pack voltage is essentially being applied to the motor when I'm telling it 50% on the throttle here. And that puts a lot of priority on that low end resolution. And as I said prior, that gives me about 0.01 volts per step when I'm starting up as compared to 0.02, twice as good resolution. Now on the top end, it, it is giving it up and pushing it up to about 0.04 volts at the very end where the curve is sloping very steeply. And I've never once in my life said, hmm, I need more control on the top end here. You know, it's uh, maybe in a racing situation, you, you might. Um, I'm not really a racer, so I can't say if that'd ever be useful for racing. From what I understand, nobody ever adds more sensitivity to the top. It's always on that bottom low end to where you're more likely to break traction. And the same thing for a crawler. Um, what we're looking for is a really smooth startup, extremely smooth startup at the bottom end where it's not you know, twitchy on the trigger finger. We don't, we don't want it twitchy down here. We want to be able to control that really smooth startup and roll into you know a medium speed or for, let's say we even want to jump something it's the, all the wheel speed is still there you just got to do a full trigger pull and it comes on just as fast as it would seem without that expo but adding that throttle curve is really the big point to really really smooth it out to where if you already have it tuned it can be great and i can control it just as slow as i could without the expo but the expo simply makes it easier and anything that i can do to make my job easier as a driver i'm going to do that um, so there's really nothing else. The brake curve I usually don't mess with besides we're, we're using the uh, drag brake instead of the real brake. So I, I never really get into the brakes here. Uh, software, there's an update available. You can actually save and print your settings on the Castle Link as well. I haven't changed anything, but I'm going to go ahead and update the controller. It'll run the program settings, tell us that it is complete, and hit OK. So we unplug after we've updated the settings. So always turn on your radio first. Always turn on your radio first, and then plug in your rig. And remember to plug your ESC back into your receiver. <laughs> that helps. All right, so we've got a rig that's programmed and ready to go, and I'll just do some tests on the table here. I don't think we need to go out crawling today to show you the good low speed control, but just a teeny little bit of trigger pull. And you can hear it trying to start up. It's putting just just such a small amount of voltage into it. And, and I'm not really being very smooth. I think we're also in second gear. Let's see. Yeah, that's second gear, all right. There we go. First gear. That's kind of ear piercing indoors. I hope it's not so ear piercing in the, in the video. So let's just give it a teeny little bit of throttle and I can actually feel that the trigger's being sticky on me. This one's, this controller's had a lot of use. No, that's not too bad for just on the bench. It can certainly do better. It's, it's actually easier on the rocks than on the flat table. There we go. A nicer radio would make this easier too. Uh, because the, this throttle being sticky makes it to where it wants to kind of jump to life and jump through the throttle settings instead of smoothly going back and forth. But now this is pretty much, eh, it's not minimum throttle, but it's enough throttle to get the rig rolling. And I can probably spend a minute just crawling across this small table. It's like a second hand. The tire is like a second hand. I think that's good enough to show y'all. So we programmed it. We got good low speed resolution. The procedure is going to be the same for pretty much any castle based ESC. It's very, very similar for Tekken controllers. They have the same sort of settings in there. 
And uh, so that's pretty much what you do. You make sure that your rig is smooth. You make sure that your motor is selected to have a good startup to begin with. Don't select a racing motor or you know a, a cheap unknown brand and, and think, hey, I'm gonna get good performance out of it. You probably aren't, unfortunately. Uh, so select a motor that's engineered for good low speed control and also good torque density at the same time so you're not giving anything up. Then select a quality ESC after all of that and you'll pretty much be ensured that once you get it tuned that you can have as good low speed control as I do along with having a really high wheel speed on top. Um, doing the same thing for brush motors works exactly the same. We can't have quite as much of a throttle range on brush motors because of the brush losses. Once you get going too fast uh, essentially the brush losses themselves make the startup become jumpy uh, and the uh, on a three pole motor like a torque master three slot motor it ends up being around 2100 kV to where it, it falls out that if you go any faster than that uh, you simply don't get good low speed control anymore now as I've talked about if you engineer the motor to have smoother startup sometimes you have to give up torque and that's what happens with a five slot motor as well that it has much smoother startup but it does have uh, essentially a flux decoupling and it doesn't have the torque density that a three slot would but you can have a much higher wheel speed in this particular case and so we can go up to pretty much an equivalent to 3000 kV with a five slot motor and still have that good buttery low speed startup um, even with a higher wheel speed. And that's, you know, it, there's a lot of ins and outs to it. And I, I know I may be getting a little overly technical for this video, but that's, that's kind of how it goes on every system. You're usually going to have a little bit of give and take. Um, if you want to increase one thing, then you're probably going to have, you know, a decrease in another. And, and for startup, it's usually torque density in startup or an efficiency in startup. Um, not always the case if there's enough time spent on the engineering, but it is something to just to be aware of a lot of times when you get a motor, like if you're comparing four poles, for instance, the four pole that starts up a little smoother is probably going to have a little bit less torque density than the four pole that is, you know, kind of a hard punch on startup. But when you're talking about crawling, the one that punches hard when it starts up is not going to be controllable on the rocks. And so it's really just a completely unusable motor and that would kind of guide your selection in, in that way but uh, yeah once you get all that set up uh, get your ESC tuned in and then you know even having a not so quality radio you can get great results but once you get all that if you're really an efficient auto getting a nice radio will make it even easier to control yeah so that's basically the rundown you uh, go through all those things and do some fine-tuning on the programming like I've done and you can have slow speed control just like I do I hope that this helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, go down below and post them up and put your thoughts in the comments. Let us know what you think about this and what you do for your setup to get that good low speed control. Thanks for tuning in today and have a good one.